This is part of the projection mapping display we have set up on the Hodgson Hollow Home Haunt. Each year the show is modified a bit, but it's usually about 15 or 20 minutes in length, with various clips and songs and effects. In this tutorial I will show you how to achieve a similar effect so that you can add animations to any surface for any occasion. I will try to cover as much of the process as possible. There are timestamps on the screen for each of the main steps involved. These will include creating the masks of each surface in Photoshop, importing those masks into After Effects, creating a color changing effect as seen here in the This is Halloween animation, adding textures and video elements as seen in this clip with the skeleton dance and some elements from Atmos Effects, and finally, using Video Copilot's Saber plugin to create a beam of energy tracing around an element, like in this clip from the Beetlejuice theme. To start, a few things you will require. Obviously, a projector is a must. I'm using an Optima GT750, which has a brightness of 3000 lumens. I wouldn't recommend going much further below 3000 to ensure that your effects remain crisp and visible in most light conditions. The higher the resolution, the better the picture quality will be as well. My projector is a short throw projector, so it can be placed fairly close to the surface it's displaying on. I just used the test pattern to see how much of the house would be covered from my driveway. Short throw was a big benefit in my case, but it will depend on where you would like your setup. Which leads me to the next requirement, some sort of stand or enclosure that you can use to ensure your projector is protected from the elements. And just as important as keeping your projector dry, you'll want to make sure that you can easily replicate your setup. You will need to place your projector in as close to its original position as possible to have your animations line up on your surfaces. So, marking the height on your tripod and the exact spots the feet are placed will help you later down the line. In my case, I built a small stand inside a decorative column so my projector is lined up right where it needs to be each year. Word of warning though, try to account for some airflow if needed. It's not uncommon for the temperature to build up in there, leading to an overheated projector. Another obvious consideration would be the surface to project on. Keep in mind when getting ready to create a projection mapping that the effect will look its best when shot on a flat surface that is lighter in color. I have some darker stone on the lower half of my house. Any elements I really want to be seen, I make sure are nowhere near that stone. Finally, this tutorial will be using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. You don't necessarily need to use these specific programs, the theories here should translate to other software. I am by no means an expert in either Photoshop or After Effects, and there may be better, more efficient ways to execute some of the steps along the way. This is just the process I have found to work. So to begin, let's go take a look at the oh-so-accurate, totally-to-scale model of my house. I didn't set up my projector outside to put together this tutorial, but this is the same process I went through on my actual house. Plug your projector into your computer and rather than mirroring your desktop on both displays, extend the display to the second screen. So now you're seeing different things on your computer screen and the projector screen. Open Photoshop and create a new file. Set the canvas size to be the same as the resolution you will be projecting your video at. In my case, this is 1920 by 1080 and drag that new canvas over so that it is what is being displayed through the projector. Here's what mine looks like. The left is what I see on my laptop screen, the right is showing over the boxes. To make it a little easier to see, I like to change the color of the background layer to black. Hit G for your paint bucket tool, then D to set the palette to the default colors and click the layer. Now, since this layer is the same resolution as the projection, we want to make sure we are working with it at that resolution and in the correct position. Press F to make the canvas full screen, then Control 1 to bring the view up to 100%. And I'll just turn that black background back on. Okay, time to start mapping the surfaces. To do this, simply create a new layer and give it a label for the area you want to map. Next, press P to select the pen tool. And over on your house, start carefully plotting points around the edges of your area. Depending how flat the surface is and how straight on the projector is pointed, you may find your mouse is moving kind of unexpectedly. Take your time and try to be as precise as possible. 
The more accurate you are at this stage, the better the end result will be. Just go all the way around as close to the edge as you can. I personally find that placing many points with short distances between them works really well. But if you have a nice clean straight lines, you may be able to get away with just a few points on your path. Once you've gone all the way around and completed the path, go over to the path section in Photoshop and control click the path to select it. Bring up the paint bucket tool again by pressing G and drop a solid color into that area. White is nice and easy to see. Now you can see if there are any areas that were missed or if the selection went too far beyond the intended area. If you're happy with that surface, then add a layer mask to the layer. And just to keep focus on one area at a time, turn off the visibility of that layer. Now it's just a matter of repeating the process for each individual segment of your surface. Create a label and new layer, press P to bring up the pen tool, drop points all around the perimeter of the area. Once done, go to the path selection and control click the path to select it, apply a solid color, apply a layer mask, and turn off the visibility of that layer. A trick I found worked well for the windows was to follow the process for the entire outside of the window frame, which would also cover the window itself. Then, trace the window. After applying the layer mask to the window, keep the selection active, but go to the layer mask for the frame. Fill that in with solid black. So now the empty space in the frame is a perfect exact match to that of the glass. On this top piece, the box has a bit of an odd shape, so some of the area I mapped out goes beyond where I want it to cover. For this, I just kept the layer mask selected and used a hard brush to just apply black to anywhere that goes beyond the surface. This is pretty much the same thing we were doing with the window, using the black with the layer mask to remove what we don't want to be seen. Once all of the surfaces were plotted out, I made a duplicate of all the layers and combined them into a single full version. Here are all the layers I made for each selection of the uh, house. Make sure that all of the layers are turned on and save the PSD of this Photoshop project. The hard part's done. Take a careful note of exactly where your projector is set up and it's time to go back inside. Now that the masks are done for the house, it's time to import them into a video editor so that clips and effects can be applied. In After Effects, I double clicked in the project pane to bring up the open dialog and selected the Photoshop PSD file that I just saved down. When you import that over to After Effects, it will ask you how you want to interpret the file. Make sure it's imported as its own composition and that it's editable layers. As soon as it's been imported, I like to immediately duplicate the comp by hitting Ctrl D and renaming one as the master file. I won't make any adjustments to this, only copy the comp or elements from it when I need them. This original can now be edited. Let's open up the comp. Out of the gates, all of the layers that were in the Photoshop file are listed. One nice little trick I like to use is to take the layer that is the combined version of the entire house and set the blending mode to stencil alpha. What this will do is make it so that everything that is placed beneath that in the timeline will only display within the shape of that layer. Think of it like a track map that applies to the entire composition. We don't need this background layer. It can be deleted. Since everything is all the same color right now, it all kind of blends together. Let's take a quick peek at all the different elements again. In fact, let's make it a little easier for these to all stand out from each other. I have a Halloween color palette that I like. I'm going to import it into the project and bring it into the comp. You can see how the stencil alpha layer cuts off the visibility on the sides. Let's bring this above that so we can see the whole thing. I'm going to start adding some new solid layers and applying the colors from this palette. In a couple steps, I'm going to start applying a fill effect to those solids with these colors again. If you'd like, you could get away with just doing this directly to the individual mask layers. I'm just in the habit of only using my masks as track mats, which is what we'll start applying now. Drag the solids down so there's one beneath each of the elements in an alternating pattern.
Once they're all in place, make sure their visibility is turned on, select all of the solids, and in the track mat dropdown, choose Alpha Mat. Now, all of the solid colors will take on the shape of the mask in the layer above it. There we go. Everything stands out a little bit more. I like to use exactly this screen when I am lining up my projector on Halloween night. Having these nice, bold, solid colors that completely fill each section of the house lets me know if I need to make any adjustments at all. It really shows off if the projector is even slightly out of place. Having everything bright and colorful is fun, but it's even better if there's some changes to keep it dynamic. So let's make this a little bit more exciting. Hit Ctrl K to bring up your comp settings and rename this something like Color Switch. Remember when I said we were going to add the fill effect to all these solids? Well, now is the time. If you added that right to the masks, then you're already ahead of the game. For each of the solid layers, drop in the fill effect and set the color to be whatever that solid color originally was. Yeah, it's a little redundant, but the problem with solid layers is that keyframes can't be added to change the color. Once the color is set for each, hop ahead in the timeline a bit. I jumped about half a second for this, but in my main animation, I just timed it to the beat of the song. At that point, click the stopwatch for the fill's color to set a keyframe for each layer. Then jump forward one frame, and starting from the top layer, change the color of the fill effect to what the layer below it is currently set to. Just use the eyedropper to grab from the thumbnail in the timeline. And just for fun, let's do it one more time. Jump forward in the timeline a bit, and without any layers selected, press U to expand all of the keyframes in the timeline. Click on the top one for the fill color and drag it down to the layers below and it should set the keyframe for all of them. Move forward one frame and repeat the process. Change the color of each layer to that of the one below it. So now, if we hit play from the beginning, we have this little color changing effect. After rendering it out, here's how it looks when projected on the mapped surface. This is nice and simple, and the effect plays really well when paired with music. Now that we've started playing a bit with all of the different masks, let's turn this surface into more of a scene and start integrating multiple video elements together. I'm going to create a new comp in 1920 by 1080 and title it Videos and Texture. I will also create a new folder with the same name to load in some assets. For this, I have four elements ready. An overgrown stone texture from textures.com, a stock image of a theater curtain from pixabay.com, an old public domain trailer from a horror B-movie that I grabbed from archive.org, and an animation of some skeletons climbing out of the grave that I purchased from atmosfx.com. If you're looking to do a lot of projection effects, definitely take some time to check out the Atmos FX library for resources. Okay, those four elements are now in the project folder. I'm going to go into my house mask master sequence and copy over the layers. Same as with the color change effect, the background can be deleted and change the full house layer to stencil alpha. First things first, let's bring in the stone texture and just drop it down at the bottom. Turning off the other masks, you can see the stencil alpha at work. I'm just going to press S on the stone layer to bring up the scale control and bring that down so it's just covering the visible areas. And I'll hit P to adjust the position so the whole house is covered. That looks pretty good. Next, I like to frame my video clips with theater curtains just to add a little flavor. Bring that asset down into the timeline and position it about where it'll be displayed. For my setup, I like to have this on the garage door. Place that layer below that mask on the timeline and change the track mat to alpha mat. Finish sizing and positioning the curtains to fill up the area. Next, bring in the video clip you would like to use. Drop that down below the curtains layer and resize and position the clip to fill up the space behind the curtain. Finally, I dragged over the clip of the skeletons and placed it under the window layer. After a rough resize, change the track mat to alpha mat. I scrub the clip forward a bit to start where the skeleton first appears. I want to be able to see a bit more of the other skeletons in the background, so I brought the scale down a bit until I was more happy with the proportions. And this scene is done. Let's render it down and see how it looks. I find there's always a nice added wow factor when it looks like there's something actually inside your house. For the last effect, let's add in some beams of energy tracing around some of the house trim. 
To do this, you'll need the free Saber plugin from Video Copilot. You can download this directly from the tutorial section on videocopilot.net. There is also a full half hour tutorial on the page outlining how to achieve a number of great effects. Definitely worth a watch as we will barely scratch the surface of this plugin. So once you have the plugin installed, create a new comp in After Effects. I'm going to call it Energy and set it to a few seconds long. Over in the House Masks Master Comp, I'm just going to copy the layers that I will be running the effect around, the window frame and the garage trim. Paste those in and create a new solid. It doesn't really matter what color it is, Sabre will override that. In the effects window, scroll down to Video Copilot and drag over Sabre, which will produce this basic blue lightsaber. And I'll change the blending mode of the layer to Add so we can see what's going on underneath it. Sabre has a ton of preset styles already built in. I think the clip I was showing at the beginning of this tutorial was started using the Ghostbusters preset. For this though, I think I'll use the Starkiller preset. In order to change the effect from the default straight vertical line into a shape of our choosing, all we need to do is draw a mask on that layer. To do this, just select the pen tool or use the keyboard shortcut G to bring it up. Then on the same layer with the effect applied, trace around the element you would like the effect to appear on, pretty much the same way we mapped out the house in the first place. Once you have that mask in place, go to Customize Core and change the core type from Saber to Layer Masks. And just like that, it's in the right shape. Since we were just using the window frame element as a reference, we can now turn that layer off. To animate the beam going around the window frame, it's incredibly easy. Just scrub ahead in the timeline to the point you would like the animation to be complete. I'm going to hop to the one second mark. In the effect controls, Add a keyframe for the start offset control, which should be defaulted at 0%. Next, go back to the beginning of your timeline and set the start offset to 100%. And now the beam should be animating through the path of the mask from the first point you placed through to the last. That looks a little rigid and jagged, so to smooth out the animation a little bit, I'm going to press U to bring up the keyframes in the timeline, select the end one, and press F9 to easy ease the animation. Now I'm going to quickly run through the process again on the garage door. Create a new solid, drop in the Saber effect, change the blend mode to add, switch the preset to match your scene, I think I'll set the garage on fire. Use the pen tool on the layer with the effect applied to match the shape of the element. Change the core from Saber to Mask. Scrub ahead a second or two. Set a keyframe for Start Offset at 0%. Go back to the beginning of the timeline and set a keyframe for Start Offset to 100%. And just because those were so nice and easy, let's throw in a bonus one to fill in the space at the top left. I'm going to grab that layer from the House Mask Master Comp and copy it over, then create a new solid and set the House Mask as the track mat. In effects, I'll go to Generate, and then drag Radio Waves over onto the solid. This creates a fun little repeating effect. I want it to have sort of a spiderweb feel, so I'll change the number of sides all the way down to 5. Next, I'll change the color to a Halloweenish orange and crank up the frequency a bit. I may have gone a bit too high in this case, but play around with the settings until the speed is right. To make it a bit more dynamic, I set a spin keyframe towards the end of the timeline, and at the beginning, I placed another one at zero. Finally, I applied a glow effect, and I just kept the default settings. Now we have this cool hypnotic repeating spiderweb effect that took no time at all. Let's see how this all looks rendered out. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you create a map and apply video effects and animations to that space, bringing your digital decorating to another level. Thanks for watching and happy haunting.